أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قاف والقرآن المجيد بل عجبوا أن جاءهم منذر منهم فقال الكافرون هذا شيء عجيب أإذا متنا وكنا ترابا ذلك رجع بعيد قد علمنا ما تنقص الأرض منهم وعندنا كتاب حفيظ رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي فالحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ثم اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته we are now in the 50th surah and the 50th surah begins by testifying to the majestic noble nature of the quran qaf wal quran al majid it's a makkan surah again and this is actually in the earlier first four years makkan period that we're back in and these surahs tend to have shorter ayat uh, in the way they're they're structured the literary style is of shorter ayat and rapid syllables wal quran al majid and i swear by the quran full full of majesty uh, majd in arabic someone something that you know uh, someone that something that demands respect grandeur something that should be taken into like people should be in awe of it that's majd بَلْ عَجِبُوا أَنْ جَاءَهُمْ مُنْذِرٌ مِّنْهُمْ Rather the case is that they, they find it strange that a warner came to them from among themselves. فَقَالَ الْكَافِرُونَ هَذَا شَيْءٌ عَجِيبٌ Then disbelievers said, this is a strange thing. أَيْذَا مِتْنَا See this surah, the, the early call of Islam wasn't actually focused on the message itself, meaning the, the Prophet and Revelation. It was more focused on the idea that there is in fact an afterlife. There is in fact something that's going to happen. And that's the, that's the conversation. And so when the warning comes about the afterlife, that's what's going to be talked about most here. أَإِذَا كُنَّا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا When we've died and we've been turned into dirt, ذَلِكَ رَجْعٌ بَعِيدٌ That is a very far-fetched return. How is that going to happen? رَجْعٌ بَعِيدٌ That's, we're way gone. We're goners. How are we ever going to come back to being alive again? قَدْ عَلِمْنَا مَا تَنْقُصُ الْأَرْضِ مِنْهُمْ We already know what the earth takes away from them. How much they start, little by little, the earth starts eating away at their bodies. Little by little by little. You know, when the, when the, when the body is, is you know, buried in the ground and the worms and all of this stuff and you start deteriorating, Allah says, we know exactly what happens. Better than you. وَعِنْدَنَا كِتَابٌ حَفِيظٌ And at the same time, we in our possession alone have a book that is guarded, and it's a guarding book. Guards what? Guards your deeds. You may die, but your ruh lives on, and your deeds live on. In Illiyin, in the highest records, or Sijin, in the lowest prison records. The prison has its register too, and it's guarded there. بَلْ كَذَّبُوا بِالْحَقِّ لَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ Rather, the fact of the matter is, they have called the truth a lie. They have, they have uh, accused it of being a lie when it came to them. فَهُمْ فِي أَمْرٍ مَرِيج Then they are in a confusing issue. مَرِيج When two things merge together, literally merge in English, مَرِيج When two things are fused together. In the Arabic language, because it's so, it's, it relies so much on imagery, the words in Arabic that have to do with confusion usually have to do with two or more things coming together. And words that have to do with clarity are things coming apart. Like tabayyun or bayyin or uh, mubin is from bana, two things to be separated. But maraj, you know, is two things fused together and therefore you can't tell the difference between them, it's confusing. So, fahum fi amrin marij. Afalam yanduru ila samai fawqahum. Didn't they look towards the sky above them? Kaifa badaynaha? How did we build it? Wazayyannaha? And how we beautified it? Wa malaha min furuj? And it has no cracks. They're going down it at all. وَالْأَرْضَ مَدَدْنَاهَا And the earth we laid it down. وَأَلْقَيْنَا فِيهَا رَوَاسِيَا You see, who will, كَيْفَ بَلَيْنَاهَا How did we build the universe? How did we build the sky? Today the astronomer can explore that. 
When Allah says, رَوَاسِيَ We stretched the earth out and we placed in it these pegs, these mountains that don't move. That's the geologist PhD, the Muslim that's going to read this ayah and do a PhD in geology. وَأَنبَتْنَا فِيهَا مِن كُلِّ زَوْجٍ بَهِيجٍ And we made sprout in it. We made all kinds of colorful, joyous kinds of plants, pairs of plants come out of it. And zawjin bahij mostly refers to plants because bahja, usually it comes from plants. So the botanist is now going to study the world inspired by the Qur'an. Tabsiratan, this is all for you to take a good look. Wa dhikra, and to be a, serve as a powerful reminder. Likulli abdim munib, for all, for every single slave that seeks to come back. Wa nazzalna minas sama'i ma'an mubaraka. And we sent, especially from the sky, we sent water full of the power of barakah. It brings out the good of the earth, doesn't it? Istikhrajul khair. So the earth is dead, it's the seeds in there, but it, the seed has potential, but it can't bring it out on its own. That's what Mubarak is, bringing out the good that is possibly there. فَأَنْبَتْنَا بِهِ جَنَّاتٍ Then we, as a result of it, we caused gardens upon gardens to come out. وَحَبَّ الْحَصِيدِ And even the grain that is harvested. حَبَّ الْحَصِيدِ So Allah talks first of all, Jannat, is the imagery of fruits, you know, tr- you know, trees with their fruits on them and you're picking the fruits. And then حَبَّ الْحَصِيدِ the, the grain that finally grew and it was cropped. It was cut. Hasid is actually which is cropped. وَالنَّخْلَ بَاسِقَاتٍ And palm trees that are so tall, بَاسِقَاتٍ طِوَالًا أو حَوَامِلًا They're tall and they're full of bunches of dates. لَهَا طَلْعُ nadid that have, it, their stalks are nadid. Nadid يعني متراكم, layered, one on top of the other. بعضه فوق بعض. رِزْقًا للعباد. This is all as provision. This was all made as provision, as things to, things to sustain yourself for slaves. وَأَوْحَيْنَا بِهِ بَلْدَةً مَيْتَ And by means of that water, we give life to a dead land. كَذَلِكَ الْخُرُوجِ And just like that, the coming out is going to take place. You will be coming out just, just as plants come out of the earth. كَذَّبَتْ قَبْلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ وَأَصْحَابُ الرَّسِّ وَثَمُودِ Before them, the nation of Nuh, the nation of the well, الرَّس, الرَّس الْبِئْر, الْعَمِيق, deep well. And the, the story is that these people, the people of the Ras, are called people of the Ras because they took their messenger and threw him in a well. And then they were destroyed. يعني أَغْرَقُوا نَبِيَّهُمْ ثُمَّ أُهْلِكُوا وثمود and then the, the people of Thamud وعاد وفرعون وإخوان لوط and عاد ثمود and the brothers of لوط وأصحاب الأيكة and the people of Madian the, the trees the giant trees وقوم تبع and the nation of تبع you remember what region تبع was Yemen. Yemen good كل كذب الرسل all of them li- called the messengers liar فحق وعيد then my threatening promise became true وعد in Arabic promise وعيد scary promise threat that's the difference between wa'id and wa'id. فَحَقَّ wa'id And my, my, my threatening promise came to pass. It became justifiable. أَفَعَيِّنَا بِالْخَلْقِ الْأَوَّلِ We read before, لَمْ يَعْيَا بِخَلْقِهِنَّ لَمْ يَعْيَا بِخَلْقِهِنَّ He didn't get exhausted, overwhelmed, burnt out, flustered by creating uh, the skies and the earth. Now he says, did we get tired by creating the first time? Is that what you think? That it took so much energy to make the universe and your life in the first place that we're too tired now to do it again. Balhum fi labsim min khalqin jadid. The fact of the matter is they're in confusion. Another word for confusion. There's marij. Now there's labs. Like in modern Arabic we say, na multabis. Hunaka iltibas. There's confusion. It comes from libas. Libas means what? Clothing. Because the clothing is supposed to create confusion. What part? What is this? Where is your body and where is the garment? It covers the flaws in your body. It covers the shape of your body. It hides things, so it creates a kind of mystery. So they're in a mystery. In the matter of a new creation altogether, how will be we a new creation? This is very important ayah for psychology students. No doubt we had created the human being. And we know what his own nafs this thing inside of us, the nafs, which has 28 adjectives in the Qur'an. Nafs has 28 adjectives in the Qur'an. How, what, what whispers it gives it? We know shaitan makes waswasa, alladhi waswisu fi sudurin nas. Now we're learning the nafs, the inner self, also makes waswasa. In Qur'anic psychology, if you will, 
you have some very important terms. You have the heart, qalb. You have the aql, intellect. You have the ruh, can't really translate ruh. You have the nafs, right? You have these different nafs. Then within the nafs, you have a nafs al-amara, nafs al-dawama, nafs al mutmainna You have these different kinds of nafs. And basically, the issue in Islamic psychology, Quranic psychology, what's going on inside a human being is there is an intellect. And literally, the word aql, that which holds you back. There's a qalb, the qalb, and the qalb, can, some things can be beautified inside the heart, iman, or what shaitan wants. Zayyana lahumu shaitanu a'malahum, ulaika habbaba ilaykum ul iman wa zayyanahu fi kulubikum. So you either, either iman will be beautified in your heart, or you know, what shaitan wants will be beautified in your heart. But basically, the heart is the battlefield between the nafs and the ruh. There's two things, there's nafs and there is ruh. And their, their battle is happening inside the heart. The, Islam says there should be a balance between nafs and ruh. There's a, there's a time for ruh, there's a space for ruh, and there's a space for nafs. Nafs says, feed me, clothe me, beautify me, fulfill my, you know, fulfill my lusts, fulfill my appetites. Ruh says, feed my soul, feed me, the soul itself. You know why this is important? In modern psychology, the father of modern psychology, anybody know who that is? Yeah, Sigmund Freud. He developed a picture of human personality without revelation. He didn't resort to revelation to come up with his, I mean, his is, though we don't agree with his picture, but it's not something you can entirely dismiss either. It did, he is the father of modern psychology. It's not a small thing. And what he has to say is really interesting. He breaks the human personality into three parts. He says there's an id. You guys, when you take Psych 101, you learn this. There's the id. There's the libido. Or, you know, id, e ego, and then superego. Okay? Id, ego, superego. And what is it? The id is just desires. It has appetites. It doesn't know wrong from right. It just wants to eat. It has an urge. It wants to fulfill it. There's a part of ourselves that's no different from animals, he says. That's the id. And we know that in Islam. That much we don't disagree. Then he says on top of that, there's an ego. And the ego is basically something that holds you back. Now, what it does is, it says, okay, you're hungry, let me figure out how to feed you. You can't just eat off of somebody else's plate. Let me set up a plan by which you can eat. The intellect. So it's similar in Islamic studies to the nafs, just wants, nafs al -amara, it just wants stuff. And then there's the aql that holds back and says, no, 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 that's not the right way to go by, you have to do this or that or the other. So it's a change of language, but it's really the same concept. And then he says there's something called the superego, and I want to read something to you that you said about the superego. The superego aims for perfection. It comprises that organized part of the personality structure, mainly but not entirely unconscious, that includes the individual, uh, individual's ideals, spiritual goals, and psychic agency. It criticizes and prohibits his or her drives, fantasies, feelings, and actions. Wow. What does that sound like? It's perfection. It's... It's the, no, 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 listen carefully. It's, it's, it, seems, it seeks perfection, number one, it says. What part of us was in the company of perfection? The ruh was. Then he says it's, it's, uh, uh, it's mostly but not entirely subconscious. The ruh. Then it includes the person's ideals, spiritual goals. It includes the spiritual goals. It prohibits him from his, from his drives and fantasies. Where is that? See, he didn't use the terms. But even with reflection on the human being, just from observation, he said there's something more to the human being than just animal instinct. He came to the wrong conclusions about what the superego is supposed to do, what its function is, because he didn't have the light of revelation. So he's just had the, the darkness of speculation on top of that. But as far as human observation can take him, it's pretty far. That's pretty far. And so we have the nafs, and it makes waswasa. The, the nafs keeps want, wanting you to do stuff. And it's constantly pushing at you. There's a part of you that's constantly poking at you. Hey, hey, aren't you hungry? Eat something. Eat something. Do something. وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ And we, Allah says, are closer to Him. We are closer to Him than His own nafs. 
Min hablil walid from the jugular vein. Walid comes from warad. Falamma warada ma amadian. Mawrid, a place where water comes out. Hablil walid, the jugular vein is called walid because, first of all, it looks like a rope, like a knot in a rope. Hablil. And if you cut it, what comes out? Water gushes out, or blood gushes out. That's why it's called walid, because like a water fountain lying inside, like a blood fountain lying inside. Allah says we're closer to the human being than his own hablul walid. Now, what does that mean for us practically? It means Allah is closer than you can imagine. He's closer than you can imagine. And this is the wrong thing to do with these ayat is to have a conversation, is Allah really here? Is Allah really everywhere? Is Allah in the seventh heaven? Where is He? You know why that's wrong? Because I've been trying to tell you from the beginning, there are two worlds, the world of the seen and the world of the unseen. And the things we say above, below, here, there, inside, outside, these are dimensions of the world of the seen. Allah Azza wa Jal is in the unseen. You can't talk about Him Talk about someone from the unseen in the limited sense of the seen. So when Allah says He's close to us, it's in the ghayb to us what that means. Literally, it's in the ghayb to us. We don't have to figure it out in a mathematical, logical sense. He's just, His ma'iyya is close to us, that's it. إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ When the two that are going, they're supposed to be meeting, عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشَّمَالِ قَعِيدِ The two angels are going to show up, مُنْكِرْ نَكِيرْ and they're going to sit on the right and the left. They're going to be sitting at the time of death. Because he, since he mentioned the jugular vein, what comes to mind, death does. So, here we go. He, won't, he doesn't ever utter a single word. Lafl, in Arabic, to pronounce. Loves, loves. Talaffava, to pronounce. Unka talaffuz bada chai. Right? That's what we say in Urdu. Talaffuz. Lafl in Arabic to utter, he doesn't say a single word, not a single syllable comes out of his mouth. Illa ladayhi raqibun atid. Except that along with him, right by him, is a raqib, a hafiz, a guardi, muhafiz li a'malihi. Someone guarding, watching over him. Atid, someone pre- ready and present. Someone prepared, ready and present. Mu'ad, hadir. Waja'at sakratul mawti bil haq. Then the pangs of death. The, the drunkenness of death, the in and out of subconsciousness that comes with death, it comes with purpose. This is the very thing you used to run away from. Tanfir, you used to hate it. Tahrub, you used to be terrified of it, run away from it. This is the individual death, yes? Allah is talking about the individual death. But now He talks about the collective life. All of you, one by one by one, will die. Every one of you will experience individual death. But then there will be a time when the trumpet is blown and all of you will be raised all together. So you may have died at different times, but your life back again is together. وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ And your, the trumpet will be blown into. ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْوَعِيدِ That is the day of the threatening promise. Al-Wa'id. وَجَاءَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَعَهَا سَائِقٌ وَشَهِيدٌ We saw in Surah Al-Zumar, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا now we're reading, every person will have with it someone who pushes him forward, someone who hurts him along, and a witness. One angel just to get you quickly through, escort you. You know how when the prisoner walks slowly, slowly the prison guard goes, hey, move it. Like that? For the criminal, it'll be like that. And then you know when a VIP is being taken through a crowd, what does a security guard do? Come with me, sir. And he grabs him. Like they take the president in like security threat situations, and they grab him and they... That's a sa'iq. Then there's the shaheed, the witness, meaning the one who's going to read his deeds off to him. لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِنْ هَذَا You used to be in complete oblivion. You were, you were not aware of this at all. You didn't care about this at all. فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ Then we have removed the, bear, the cover. غِطَاء literally cover. Your cover has been re- removed. Allah is teaching us that the unseen world, we can't see it because there's a cover on our eyes. There's, and Allah will lift, lift that veil. That's why the hadith about Jannah describe that the veil will be lifted and then we'll be able to see Allah. Because right now, that is in the, it's veiled. 
So today we've removed your veil. hadid. Then your vision today is ironclad. It's crystal clear. That's the word hadid. It's unflinching. It's complete. وَقَالَ قَرِينُهُ Then his partner, his qareen, we've learned about the qareen before. Every person has a qareen, that's a shaitan, that tries to mess him up. And he comes before Allah as though he was hired by Allah or something. So he comes before Allah, هَذَا مَا This is the one that's been presented before you, with me. This is the one that I've got. أَلْقِيَا فِي جَهَنَّمَا Allah gives the command, throw both of them in Jahannam. كُلَّ كَفَّارٍ عَنِيدٍ Along with them, every single, the one who was extremely ungrateful, and the one that was extremely stubborn, anid. Anid, yani shadidul anad. Anad means stubbornness in Arabic. Manna'il lil khair. The, the kind of person that prevented all good. Now there's two, two meanings here. The, the qareen, the shaitan that's with you, constantly tries to stop you from doing good. You've got five free minutes. You could sit there and do some tasbih, but he'll come and say, hey, I heard there's a new game that just came out on the phone. Go download that and play it. And you say, okay, Qareen, that's a good idea. And you download it. And then the moment you get up from that and you're like, it's, it's Salat time, hey, wait, 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 you got plenty of time for Salat. Relax. Take a nap. You take a nap, you wake up at like Maghrib. Asr is gone. Oh, well, I should make it up. No, 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 make it up later, man. You got stuff to do. Manna'il lil khayri keeps preventing you from doing good. The other is the one who listens to his qareen all the time becomes a person that prevents others from doing good. He becomes the reason good doesn't happen. Mu'tadim murib. You know manna'il lil khayri in the Muslim family? There are, there are Muslim households in which the, the, the young man wants to learn something about the Qur'an. The wife wants to put the hijab on and the husband says no. No, you're not going to do that here. She wants to pray, not in this house. That's not going to happen here. I can't allow it. I've met sisters like that. They cry their heart out. I want my child to learn Quran. My, my husband says, no, no way. Not going to happen. Ajib. And the other side too. This is manna'in lil khair. Preventing over, over and over again, preventing any good from coming or the good. Mu'tadin. Crossing the line. Murib. Always in doubt. And putting others in doubt. الَّذِي جَعَلَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر. The one who placed another God besides Allah. We know the answer to this one. Who did he place as an ilah? Himself. أَرَأَيْتَ مَنْ اتَّخَذَ إِلَهَهُ هَوَاهُ فَأَلْقِيَاهُ فِي الْعَذَابِ الشديد. Then throw him in the intense punishment. قَالَ قَرِينُهُ His qareen, his shaitan is about to be thrown in hellfire too. He says, رَبَّنَا مَا أَطْغَيْتُهُ I didn't make him rebel. لَكِنْ كَانَ فِي ضَالٍ بَعِيدٍ He himself was way out there. He was all, he was Olympic shaitan on his own. I didn't have to come and do what's was to him. It's not my fault. قَالَ لَا تَخْتَصِمُوا Allah will say, don't argue before me. Don't give me debates. وَقَدْ قَدَّمْتُ إِلَيْكُمْ And you, before you, the, the strongest possible threat had already been issued. مَا يُبَدَّلُ الْقَوْلُ The verdict is not going to be changed before me today. وَمَا أَنَا بِظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدِ And I'm not the one that's doing any wrong to any slaves. يَوْمَ نَقُولُ لِجَهَنَّمْ So now one by one by one, a person and his qadeen, a person and his qadeen, a person and his qadeen are going into the hellfire, one after the other after the other. And then Allah says, we turn to Jahannam, we say to Jahannam, halim تَلَأْتِي Are you full? Did you eat enough human beings and jinn yet? Have you had enough to eat? وَنَقُولُ And it says, هَلْ مِمْ مزيد? Is there any more? Can I have some more please? We had read before that people are so stuffed in Jahannam that when the new batch of people comes in, they say, La marhaban bihim, we don't want them here. There's no space, there's no room. La wusa'alahum, there's no, there's no room for them. That's what marhaban also means. But now, we, as stuffed as it is, hellfire wants to eat more. It wants to consume more. Wa uzlifatil الْجَنَّةُ If you have the time, there's a... I don't know if it's, the book's in print anymore. It was one of the earliest books I read when I first got kind of turned towards the deen. It was called What Happens After Death. That was the name of the book, What Happens After Death. It was a collection of, of sahih a hadith about the afterlife. It was just a hadith. And the description of hellfire in there that I read, like it's imprinted on my mind. 
it's just, it's horrifying. I can't quote it because he's quoting a hadith. So I don't want to casually quote a hadith. But if you find the book, get a hold of it, inshallah. It's called what? I don't even remember the name of the author. I was like 17 when I read it. 18. It messed me up. So it's good. Um, what happens after death? وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٍ And Jannah is going to be brought near. Brought near وَأُدْنِيَتْ It's lowered and brought near. قَرُبَتْ وَأُدْنِيَتْ When something is brought down and lowered before you. This is Uslifat. Al-Jannatu. Lil-Muttaqeen for the people of Taqwa. غَيْرَ بَعِيدٍ It's not far at all. So even the believers are being told, oh, don't worry, it's coming, it's coming. It's not that far. Even from dunya they're being told. هَذَا مَا تُعَدُونَ This is what you all have been promised. And it's not just for you. لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيظٍ It's for everyone who's awab. يعني رجاع Keeps coming back to Allah. حَفِيظ The one who guarded. حَفِيظ usually, I mean if you look at the word حَفِيظ and حَفِيظ in the Qur'an, Allah talks about guarding shame. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِيَمَنَاتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ Or يُحَفِيظُونَ also. Allah says, إِنَّا عَرَضْنَا الْأَمَانَةَ The amana you have to guard. We gave the amana to the skies and the earth. We gave a trust to the skies and the earth. They refused to carry it. They couldn't carry it. Remember that ayah? But the human being carried it. That responsibility of choice. That one thing that we have, the, the revelation that we carried, because of the choice that we have, this honor that Allah gave us, the ability to choose, He guarded that choice. He guarded that honor. Awwab bin Hafil. Man khashiya rahmana bil ghaib. The one who feared the extremely merciful in the unseen. That he saw, he, the, the mercy of Allah, even that, the love and mercy of Allah is in the unseen to us too. Sometimes you won't realize how he's being merciful. But he believed in it. Also when nobody else was around, he would still be fearful of Ar-Rahman. وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ munib, And he came before Allah with a heart that's turning back to him. أُدْخُلُوهَا salam, Enter it peacefully. ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْخُلُودِ This is the day of permanence. You'll stay here forever. لَهُمَّ يَشَاءُونَ They're gonna have whatever they want, whatever order they place, whatever they can think of, they can have. وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيد In it, they can have whatever they want, and we have something more, meaning us beyond their imagination. They can't even think of what that is. I'm just letting you know, and then there's on top of that, then some. وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ مِنْ قَرْنٍ أَشَدُّ مِنْ أُهُمْ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُمْ بَطْشًا How many towns did we destroy before them? That were more powerful than they are in terms of grabbing and squeezing and punishing, uh, you know, arresting. فَنَقَّبُوا فِي الْبِلَادِ This has been interpreted in two opposite ways, perhaps both are meant. نَقَّبَ is to go طَوَّفَ فِي الْأَرْضِ يعني You go around in the land. So we gave nations great power to seize and they seized other lands. نَقَّبُوا فِي الْبِلَادِ They went around other countries, you know, conquering territories and expanding empires and making huge, huge civilizations. They did that. Is there any place that they can go now? Those same huge powers and civilizations that conquer territories without a problem. Do they have any, any, any place to run? Mahrab, Mafar, Min al Maut, any place they can protect themselves from death? That's one interpretation. The other interpretation is Tawafu fil Ard, Hadar al Maut. That when Allah destroyed them, they were running around in any country they could find out of fear of death, but there was no escape for them. إِنَّ فِي ذَٰلِكَ لَذِكْرَ لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٍ No doubt in all of that, there is a powerful reminder. For a person that has a heart, people that have a, meaning a good heart, قَلْبٍ munib has already been mentioned. So one who really has a heart, when they hear this revelation, it'll appeal to them. The idea that there is a life after this one will make sense to them. It'll be an easy transition for them. The Abu Bakrs of the world. It's going to be easy for them. But then he says, Allah says, there's another kind of person. أَوْ أَلْقَ السَّمْعَ Or there's a person who threw his ear. Meaning he threw listening, he listened carefully. He dropped an ear and he said, okay, let me hear what you have to say. He paid attention. So he may not have been a spiritual person before Islam. But he says, okay, let me at least hear out what he has to say. The intellectual one. So there's the spiritual one and there's the intellectual one. Let me hear the arguments. Well, who was shaheed? And, and then he becomes a witness. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ We created, we already created the skies and the earth and whatever is between them in six days. وَمَا مَسَّنَا مِنْ لُهُوبٍ And no exhaustion, no overburdening touched us whatsoever. 
This is this is mentioned also. Some say because the Torah, when it, I talk, uh, I spoke to you when it said that on the seventh day he rested, and that was the Sabbath, and therefore we should rest. And so that that idea is being denied. We didn't get exhausted at all. Fasbir ala ma yaqulun. Be patient over what they're saying. Wasabih bihamdi rabbik and declare the perfection of your master, meaning your God is too perfect to be needing rest. Qabla tulu shamsi before the sun rises, wa qabla al ghurub and before it sets. This is before the five daily prayers were revealed. The Prophet was being told there are some special times that you should especially do tasbih of Allah. Wa min al layli fasabihu. Then even in the night time, a portion of the night, you should declare his perfection. Wa adbar al sujood at the heels of sujood at the you know when you're done making sajda, meaning your sajda is at the last major uh, uh, portion of salat. The three highlights of salat are. Qiyam, Ruku, Sujood. And of those three, the two important ones are Ruku and Sujood. And the one that's closest to the end of Salat is Sujood. So Allah says, when you're done with the Sujood, meaning you're done with the prayer, yani Aqab as Salawat, Aqab Salawat, at the end of the prayer, behind the prayer, you should do special tasbih. And so, Qad bayyana lana Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kayfiyat al tasbih, Aqab as Salat. The Prophet taught us, how do you do tasbih after salat, right after salat? Subhanallah 33 times, alhamdulillah, 30, that, that, that entire regiment that the Prophet taught is inspired by after the, in the a portion of the night you should do tasbih, and especially at the, helm, at the, at the end of every kind of tasbih, every, time, every kind of sajda that is. Wastami' listen carefully. يَوْمَ يُنَادِ الْمُنَادِ مِنْ مَكَانٍ قَرِيبٍ The day on which the caller will call from a nearby place. When the trumpet is blown, it's going to sound like it's right there. يَوْمَ يَسْمَعُونَ الصَّيْحَةً The day on which the, uh, the loud scream they're going to hear. And by the way, some say in the previous ayah that the Prophet is going to be called. That he's going to be given a special call from a special caller because he has a special place to be in on Judgment Day. مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا mahmuda, The praised place. So that's why this... The, and he's going to be a caller nearby so you don't have to go very far. Like a convenience to the Prophet ﷺ. Then, the day on which they're going to listen to the loud scream. بِالْحَقْ with purpose, truly they will listen to it. ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْخُرُوجِ That is the day of coming out. إِنَّا نَحْنُ نُحْيِي وَنُمِيتْ وَإِلَيْنَا الْمَصِيرِ We no doubt, we're the ones that give life, we're the ones that give death. And to us alone the final return is. يَوْمَ تَشَقَّقُ الْأَرْضُ عَنْهُمْ سِرَاعًا تَشَقَّقُ Were the earth to be cracked. سِرَاعًا يَعْنِ يَخْرُجُونَ مِنْهَا مُسْرِعِينَ They're gonna come out really rushing. All you will see is rush on that day. The earth is cracking and you know, shifting, and people are running around. ذَلِكَ حَشْرٌ عَلَيْنَا يَسِيرٌ That is a gathering mandated on us that's very easy. It's not going to be difficult for us to do that. نَحْنُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ We know very well what they're saying. وَمَا أَنْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِجَبَّارٍ And you're not going to bully them. You're not going to force them to accept this message. فَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ Then just remind with the Qur'an. This ayah I, found, I find very, uh, very inspirational for people that want to share the message of the Qur'an with the world, with their family, with their friends. Allah says, we know what they say. Just remember, you can't force anybody to change. All you can do is remind people with the Qur'an. Then whoever, whoever will truly have fear my threat, they'll benefit. But you just keep on doing it. وَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيدٌ And it's not even الَّذِي يَخَافُ وَعِيدٌ As though you don't even know who's afraid of my promise and who, who, who isn't. Anybody might just take in the advice. We have about 15 minutes left, so I'm going to start with Dhariyat because I want to make the most of our time together. Inshallah, is that okay with everybody? Yeah.